sports fans, ASMR Sports Pick with you for today's video where I will be chewing some uh, pure cinnamon gum. I have had this for a while but have not chewed any of it in a long time so here's hoping it's still uh, in good shape. Uh, 
you know, things that have happened specifically with him as a player. John Morant, of course, is going to be suspended here for the first, I don't know, what is that, a couple months of the um, coming season because he uh, likes to take videos of himself uh, waving guns around, which, while perfectly lawful <laughs> in the United States, and, uh, you know, states where he's got a license or his friend has a license um, for the gun he's waving, uh, it is a violation of the NBA policies that apply to players and their um, personal conduct. So, um, you know, he got uh, he got in trouble for this once. He got suspended and, you know, sort of, you know, <laughs> made a lot of apologies and said, boy, he's really, you know, turned to leave. He's gonna, he's gonna do some serious work on himself. And, of course, like six months later, got caught again. So now he's suspended even longer and just it, it's hard to imagine a bigger dumbass, honestly, and I love John Morant as a player. Um, I have a very significant collection of his cards, and uh, which this is the best. Um, and this is actually a card that I, I pulled out of a pack. Um, it was a redemption, sent it in, got the redemption, then sent it off to get graded, and came back at 10. And, you know, before his uh, shenanigans, this was a $3,000 card all day long. Because of his shenanigans, it's now down to about thousand dollars. It's numbered to seventy nine, by the way. Um, so, hey, here's an example of a card that you know has been on the rise, but uh, not quite enough to get it uh, into the top twenty of my collection. But I thought I'd show it off because it's a cool card. It's a Stan Musial rookie card um, that at one time I feel like this price was probably from like like 20, 2019 or something, um, like before the boom, which is when I, you know, I would have done a last on a card show a long time ago, like before the pandemic. Um, but that was the price I had on it back in, in 2019, and now it looks like it's up to $890. So, um, you know, it's going on up. I'm sure I paid like $150, $200 for that, so. Um, Otani is really one of, he, I think he's the only modern card that made my top 20, not this card, but another one. Uh, but this is a pretty cool color swap that I found when I was going through um, just some boxes of like, you know, random sleeved star cards, you know, that are generally worth like a buck or two bucks at the most. I found this one, um, I don't know, like a year and a half ago, and uh, first of all, I was surprised I had an Otani in that box because I, you know, generally pulled all of my Otanis out and kept them in a separate collection of Otani cards, um, so that was one I missed, but then I realized there was something a little different about it, you know, the coloring was uh, strange, and so, you know, I, I looked at the back, and sure enough, um, you know, it says team color, but this is known as a color swap. Uh, the team color is uh, a different color. It's normally yellow. In this one, it's white, so this is a, a rare pair, um, uh, variation. And uh, I actually didn't really think it would gem up when I sent it in. I don't know, the right edge is maybe a little bit rough, as these heritage cards can sometimes be. But I sent it in because uh, even as a PSA 9, this would be a nice card. And this was all before, you know, the start of this year, where Otani went on a kind of historic uh, rampage of uh, pitching and offensive excellence. But anyways, I noticed that uh, for a long time, this did not have any comps. These were just so rare that you didn't even see them. But it looks like there was a fairly recent comp, maybe about a, a month ago. It was before his uh, injury. I think it actually sold for like 1200 but everything before that was like quite a bit lower, so I estimated the current comp on this, if I were to sell the tape, to be like 800 bucks. Um, so, still a nice card, but kind of um, taken under the threshold needed to be in the top 20 by his injury. This card is kind of a fun one. I picked this up in uh, trade. I think I traded like a Luka Doncic. Um, autograph rookie or something to a dealer 
back at that last card show that I was at in 2019 that I was uh, dealing at. And, uh, you know, I'm a Yankees fan, so I'm always looking for interesting Yankee cards. I think I got a, a graded Topps Chrome Glaber Torres rookie card, too, um, like a sepia or reverse negative, some kind of parallel that's not too, um, you know, uncommon. But anyways, picked this up. Uh, probably was, I don't know, two $300 in value. Um, and uh, since then, you know, Jeter has been inducted in the Hall of Fame, and interestingly enough, Scott Rowland oh. is now in the Hall of Fame as well. So it's a double Hall of Famer autograph card, great PSA 10. These are not too common. I, you know, kind of searched around for comps on this. Interestingly, there's one of these that's great at PSA 10, but the autos are, like, almost com completely faded off the card. So it's clear the thing has been, like, sitting in bad lighting sunlight or really strong UV light, you know, constantly for many years, and the autograph just, you know, looked absolutely terrible, so that, and that one was sold for like 280 bucks, but uh, other than that, there was no other PSA 10 comps, and uh, raw, this card is selling for like $250, so a PSA 10 is probably easily $800, I mean, assuming there's a fluid market on this, which there isn't because there are just not many of these out there. And this is not a numbered card, but I, I'm guessing there just really aren't that many of these. Anyway, so I estimate that at $800. All right, here's another one that's fallen, you know, significantly along with the market, but also because Juan Soto had kind of a cool uh, period of performance uh, where he really uh, was not doing much when he initially got traded to the Padres. Now he has, uh, you know, picked it up. He's having actually a pretty good year this year, but has, has a slow start to the year and is kind of finishing up hot. Um, but yeah, Juan Soto, of course, wants the the darling. I think a lot of people thought Juan Soto was going to end up way better than Acuna um, based on the consistency of his bat, but uh, it seems like Acuna has really taken the lead in uh, terms of, uh, you know, overall offensive output and... Uh, Juan Soto is definitely second to him, and now third to, you know, Otani and Acuna in that 2018 rookie class. So, in any event, this, uh, this is one I also pulled from a pack. Uh, it was a redemption. I got it redeemed. Sent it in. It's actually a really nice-looking card. I mean, no real issues with the corner's edges. Centering looks like, you know, I don't know, 55, 45 at, at worst. But I think they're being very picky with this. Uh, they gave it a, a 9. A 10 would be much nicer. And um, Again, a year ago, was copying at 1320. Um, and uh, now it looks to be about $600 card in PSA 9. So there you go. There's six honorable mentions. Let's get into the uh, top 20, shall we? All right, number 20. The only modern card in the list is uh, my Atomic Refractor Rookie of Shoyo Tani graded PSA 10. A beautiful card um, that probably was worth uh, two or three hundred dollars more, you know, before he got injured recently. Um, but even today, seems to be going for about twelve hundred dollars, so that's good enough for 20th place on the top 20 most valuable cards in my collection. Again, I think that's the only modern card in here. Next up, um, got a, a pretty nice looking 54 Bowman Mickey Mantle. And of course, as uh, alluded to, everything vintage seems to have, you know, uh, seems to be, have gone up significantly since uh, a year ago. And uh, that applies especially so to um, like the major kind of players in the vintage market, like Mickey Mantle, Ty Cobb, Honus Wagner, um, Hank Aaron, guys like that are, are sort of leading the charge. All vintage is up, but the, the big names are up more than, you know, the lesser kind of um, vintage stars of uh, the pre-war and the post-war era. So Mickey Mantle going up big. It's nice PSA 4. Um, I paid a measly $470 for this, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, something like that. And um, interestingly, this this actually has fallen 
since a year ago. Um, at least based on the comps that I'm looking at uh, to get these pricing. So 1620 versus 1975. And this is actually one of the few cards that I think um, that is true of. Uh, and I think it's only true because, um, I don't know, Mickey, Mickey Mantle stuff sort of went on like a crazy spike a year ago when I was looking up comps before, and that's come down, you know, to earth a little bit on some cards, if there's not all cards, but um, seems to be true for this particular card, so still, you know, way uh, above what I paid for it, so happy to have that in my collection, and that's number 19. All right, number 18 is uh, a card that I think uh, was not on this list last year, but um, um, it has managed to sneak into the top 20 now um, at number uh, 17, or sorry, 18. 52 Bowman, Willie Mays, a very nice copy, graded uh, SGC 55. Uh, that's the old kind of style. They used to do a 100-point grading scale. Now they only do a 10-point grading scale, but they, um, even when they did the 100-point, they, they did a conversion to a 10-point. So you know what it would be graded at, you know, today if you sent it in. Um, anyways, 52 Bowman is a really uh, cool set. Um, of course, it's got a second year Mickey Mantle, second year Willie Mays in the high number series and uh, this card uh, currently is priced at uh, twenty one hundred dollars um, his stuff really has seen a spike um, you'll see another one of his cards um, from 1952 I won't spoil it but there's really only one thing that could be <laughs> um, elsewhere in this uh, in this list and that one has just gone bonkers so I think uh, this one is you know kind of riding the coattails of that card and um, has gone up quite significantly in the past year. All right. <clears throat> Here's another one that's new to the list um, this year. Um, again, this is a card that I had, you know, a year ago, but was not worth enough to be in the top 20 back then, but now it is. Uh, it's relatively high grade, um, SGC 50 or a 4. On a 10-point scale, it's a Christy Mathewson M116. These are really beautiful cards. This set, I think, is uh, underappreciated, but it's starting to get much more appreciated. And a uh, um, little teaser, the number one card in the, uh, in the collection here of the top 20 most valuable is also in this set. So um, it's making quite a splash, at least in my collection. Um, and uh, values of these cards, you know, have, have gone up. So this is, a again, you know, with these older tobacco cards, honestly, you're lucky to have some of these, you know, Hall of Famers in a PSA 1 or a 1.5 or its equivalent uh, in SGC. Uh, but this one is, you know, the equivalent of a PSA 4. It's an SGC 50. So it's a relatively high grade, um, at least in my collection. <laughs> some guys, you know, that's a low grade. Uh, they're, you know, if they're tobacco cards, they're like fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar cards. They're probably PSA six, seven, eights, but most of my PS, most of my graded uh, tobacco cards are, you know, they're major Hall of Famers and they're very low grade. So this one's a relatively high grade. It's Christy Matthews and of course the legendary pitcher um, for the uh, New York Giants <laughs> and. Uh, this one comps at $2,500. So I, I bet I paid like, I don't know, two or $300 for this. These were pretty darn cheap um, back when I bought that, at least by today's standards. Well, if you don't like Ty Cobb, you're not going to like this video from here on out because there's a lot of Ty Cobbs in here. About, uh, gee whiz, probably about 20 17 or 18, I bought a, a, a real nice collection of uh, Ty Cobb tobacco cards, all T206s, I believe, um, from one guy who uh, uh, 
uh, he, had, he had posted on a Facebook uh, card collecting group that it was for sale, and uh, I thought, oh, you know what, that seems like something I should probably take a look at, and he was actually selling it for uh, somebody, you know, for a client of his. This guy was a card dealer from, man, I think he was from Texas, and his client was in um, Las Vegas or something like that, so... Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy. I mean, it, even though, um, the price I paid for that collection compared to the values today was like stupid low, the, all of the cards together cost like, I think 25 grand. So that was easily the biggest, um, purchase, you know, I'd ever made at that point. Um, these days I've spent much, much more on, um, you know, unopened, unopened cards, cases of cards. Um, but <laughs> those have all been terrible investments. Uh, actually, not really, but they've been much worse investments than this one. I, I should have just, you know, <laughs> bought every tie cop card I could see back then and every nice mantle that I could see back then, but I didn't. Uh, so I'm glad I got these. This is a T206 uh, Piedmont 350, which is a somewhat rare um, version of the uh, T206 Red Tie Cobb here. You'll see many other versions of this card. Um, but this is, uh, you know, a, a somewhat rare one. It's not one of the super common ones, this Piedmont uh, 350, Series of 350, which you can see on the backs. Uh, it says Series of 350. Um, Anyways, this one uh, I bought uh, for eight fifty in the collection, and uh, currently comping at three thousand dollars in a PSA one. All right, next up, <coughs> uh, yet another T two hundred six Cobb. We'll probably see I don't know six, seven, eight of these. Um, this one is an old mill on the back. You can see it says old mill. Um, it's a fairly rare, it's probably kind of like media, you know, like in the middle. Maybe, it, well, actually, it's it's probably slightly more than the middle in terms of rareness, uh, you know, on a scale of less rare to more rare in terms of all the backs that you can get on these cards. T206 cards have a variety of different backs, and we'll see many of them. And some are extremely rare. Some are... Um, you know, less rare, some are kind of like slightly rare, and some are very common. So, uh, we'll see a variety. Um, this is an old mill, which is kind of like medium to slightly more than medium rare. <laughs> Sounds like I'm talking about steak, but, um, anyways, yeah, old mills are nice. Uh, you do not see these come up for sale. And for a long time, there just were not relevant comps on this card because, um, you know, there were old mills being sold, but not in this grade, so this one, they're just, for the longest time, were not very good comps on, and, um, now there are, so this one I comped at, at $3,000, um, and just to give you some perspective, like, the very common backs, uh, for the common back versions of this, you know, red background D206 Ty Cobb, in an SGC-10, you know, probably sell for, I don't know, $2,000 these days, depending a lot on, you know, if there's paper damage on his face or, you know, giant chunks out of the card. There can be a lot of variation in the uh, presentability of a card in, you know, PSA-1 or SGC-10, which is the same grade. Um, this one presents quite quite nicely. If this were a common back card, you know, it'd probably be a two thousand dollar card. But again, because it's a rare back, it's a three thousand dollar card. Um, this is a polar bear. This is one of the sort of slightly more rare backs, um, but maybe slightly less than kind of middle of the pack rare, if that makes any sense. Um, this was an SGC ten like the others. So this one I comped at 3100 and honestly, I, I think you see, you see a lot more polar bears out there than you see um, old mills, so I feel like this one is actually worth more, you know, uh, than this one when the sort of stars align right on, on comps, but, you know, comps can be weird because they're often based on auctions and sometimes an auction is just under-publicized or whatever and, you know, 
things are not uh, bid on very strongly for whatever reason. So, um, you know, a card is kind of undervalued in that sense. Um, anyways, next up, I think we're, let's see here. 17, 16, 15, 14, 15. So this is card number 13, Lucky 13. Um, and this one is uh, pretty dang rare, um, this back. It's a Tolstoy cigarettes back. You, boy, you do not see these around very much. I would say it's maybe the, I don't know, fourth or fifth, um, you know, most, like, rarest back out of probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 different backs for T206 cards, so it's quite rare. This one is beat to hell. Uh, it's an HGC 10. But I still comp this at uh, $4,000. It's, you know, it's just very rare. And, and this is another one where you just don't see a lot of, you know, transactions with this card because there's just not that many of them out there. So I'm quite happy to hang on to that card for as long as... Uh, long as I can muster. Alright, so now we're, I think this is be number, card number 12 in the top 20, and, um, you know, to kind of break that three, four thousand dollar price barrier, what we'll need to see is higher grades than, you know, PSA 1 or SGC 10, and so that's what we'll see. Um, I think coming up here is higher grades, or, um, a combination of higher grades and, uh, you know, rare backs leading to, you know, higher prices. So this is a, um, not a red cop for once. It's a bad off shoulder cop, which I always thought was a very beautiful card because that nice, like, rainbow background. Um, and it's uh, a PSA 2, which is, you know, relatively high grade <laughs> for my collection. Um, so this one uh, looks like this one's down a bit, too, from a year ago. Um, 5,400 then, and now 4,200, but, uh, still worth a good bit more than I paid for it, so, um, you know, happy to have that, happy to have a cop that's not a red bag. <laughs> Speaking of, here is the infamous, uh, green back cob, uh, definitely his, uh, most desired T206 card is the green back, and, you know, consequently the most rare. Um, I'm not sure this comes in quite as many varieties of uh, backs as uh, the red back, so uh, I think your choices are more limited. Uh, this is a Piedmont 150, which is a very common back, but even so, this card is so, you know, kind of rare and desired, it's um, quite high on the list, and it is down. Um, I think a lot of these cobs um, are down because, uh, you know, there was a pretty big spike about a year ago. I think that's why I kind of did, did the, the video I did a year ago, is because, like, a lot of my cobs were going up, and I wanted to do a video where I had to look up all the values of them. So, like, cobs and, like, mantles um, were sort of spiking a year ago, so they've kind of, you know, floated down a little bit since then, but they're still quite, quite high, and, um, you know... Can't say I'm sad to have any of these in my collection, but 4,300 is what I've got as the comp on this day. This one kind of is a bummer because there's some pinholes in it, and they're like right in his mouth, which is a very distracting place to have them, but um, I paid 2150 for this, and it was the cheapest green cob I was ever going to see, even, you know, back in 2019. They're uh, very tough to get and very pricey, so... Any green cob is a good green cob, I guess is what they uh, is what they say, you know, back on the back on the, the main streets. Um, all right, so here we have another kind of slightly higher grade uh, PSA 1.5. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, you know, the difference in value, um, you know, between a PSA 1 and a PSA 1.5 is significant, but um, you know the the, the sort of presentability of a card could be much better on that PSA 1 than on the PSA 1.5 or even a PSA 2, depending on what exactly is going on on the card. Um, so, I don't know, it's, it's kind of crazy, um, you know, how the PSA grade of even half a point, you know, can really in, impact value on 
some of these higher end cards. This one uh, I comped at forty five hundred dollars um, for current pricing, and uh, you know it doesn't really look that much nicer <laughs> than a lot of the other cops that are SGC tens and rarer backs. But because it's a one point five, you know it gets that premium. But um, that's the way it goes with grading. Alrighty, we have uh, yet another just kind of relatively common um, Redback Cobb, but it's a 1.5, so it gets, you know, $4,500 of value. This is a Piedmont um, 350. This is a Sweet Capital 350, both fairly common. All right. Um, next up, we have a you know, another sort of higher grade card for my collection. SGC 30, equivalent to like a PSA 2. Um, and this one actually looks pretty darn nice, so probably worth the extra cost that the higher grade will get you in this case. But uh, this one's um, 4500 and uh, as we see, the value from a year ago was 4080 so this one is up. And I think that, you know, the trend seems to be that the PSA 1s, even in the rarer backs, you know, are down a bit um, compared to one year ago. But, like, the higher-end stuff may be creeping up, so I think that's what we'll probably see here with some of the higher-grade ones. Um... All right, so here's um, a you know one of these nice old mills, but it's a higher grade. It's a 1.5 PSA equivalent SGC 20. So uh, that's why this one is you know so close to the top in value in the top 20. It's a rare back and it's uh, a higher grade than the other ones that we looked at earlier. So it is competent at 4,500. Take a quick look at this nice old mill back. So yeah, there's that one, another red cob. Um, here's one. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think a, a sweet. I feel like that's other. Um, okay, yeah. I think I think um, this uh, 460 420 is uh, is a is a, a rarer back, you know, than most. Um, this is a, a, a sweet, uh, sweet Capro, uh, 350, but it's, uh, a different, it's a 30 series, so you can see where, yeah, so this one says 350 to 460, this one just says 350, um, I think this is less rare, the ones that say, um, 420, or that would that say 460. Uh, 350 to 460 are, are more rare. These are both sweet caprols. This is a rare variation. It's a higher grade, so that's why it's going to have a significantly higher value, which is $5,400. And again, you know, the uh, PSA 2 and up cards seem to be doing better over the last year than the, um, you know, SGC 10s and PSA 1s is the kind of the theme here. So last year, this one comped at 4700 This year it's comping at 5400 I paid 1750 for this one. So that, that was what I kind of loved about this collection when I bought it. It has a lot of, you know, nice rare backs in it. Um, kind of a mix of grades. It had that green back cob. Um, I mean, there's kind of just a, a bunch of really cool stuff in it. I, I, I'm super glad I bought it. Okay, um, next up we have a card that I alluded to earlier, which... Uh, um, I mentioned when I um, showed you the 52 Bowman Willie Mays that uh, there was another 52 uh, Willie Mays in this collection. Um, and that's this one, 52 Tops, the iconic, um, like, first Tops, you know, um, major release. They did a weird set in, 50, in 1951 that kind of sucked and wasn't really... I don't know, 
considered a, like a true card release. 52 Tops was their first kind of real card release. And, uh, of course, it's got the 52 Mantle, which everybody knows and loves, and which, you know, has gone bonkers in the last two, three years, and continues to go bonkers. Um, but the second best card in the set is this one, Willie Mays. You know, second year card. Um, first Tops card. Some people might call it his rookie, if they're, you know, Bowman haters. But, uh, this is a, a very iconic card. You see this kind of card, you know, pictured on a lot of, like, price guides and magazine, you know, sports card magazine covers. And you have since, you know, they started making those kinds of publications. So a lot of people are sort of familiar with this card. It's just one of those kind of iconic cards. Um, and when I got a chance to buy one of these for relatively cheap, uh, some years ago, I, um, I snapped it up, and I, 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 I wouldn't have imagined that it's appreciated as much as it has, but this card really is riding the coattails of that 52 Tops uh, Mantle card, and, uh, um, you know, I'm happy I have one. <laughs> um, not quite a PSA 1. It's a, a little bit better at a PSA 1.5. Let's look at the stats. Again, snapped this up at $500, just kind of thinking, man, that's that's a really cool card. I can't afford a 52 Tops Mantle, so let's get a 52 Tops Maze. One year ago, it was priced at $4,000. Now, the most recent comp is $7,200 in a PSA 1.5. I feel like I looked at that one, and it actually is quite a bit nicer of a card. It's better centered, which is a pretty big deal in these. So this one might not sell for $7,200 if I put it on the market, but, you know, it might, it might sell for that much, it might sell for more, who knows, but closest comp is that, you know, 7,200, so point is, this card has gone up significantly since last year, and it's, uh, you know, it's a beauty, super glad I picked that up when I did, and, um, uh, what can I tell you, uh, you know, the, the iconic cards of the hobby, I think, are, just a great long-term investment and certainly over the last you know year or two they have gone up you know more than anything else so that 52 tops mantle the 51 bowman mantle this 52 tops maze um you know those ty cobb cards um and the cards of a gentleman who will appear number one on our list i think um go into that collection of iconic um, you know, players and photos and card designs, and I'll speak more of that in a minute when we get there. All right, so we got one, two, three, four left, so coming in at number four. Uh, back to uh, Cobbs, and once again, um, you know, the grade is uh, a, such a big component of the value of these cards, and oftentimes that's really just um, not very logical, because this card does not look better than so many of the other cards, and it's just a common sweet cap back. Nothing fancy about this card, um, but the grade is a 35, which is a PSA 2.5 equivalent, so this does get a lot of, you know, additional value in the marketplace from that slightly higher grade, even though, and this has like a little bit of, like, kind of dirt, or I don't know what that is, just a little black mark on his nose. I mean, it, it doesn't present as well as, um, you know, some of these other ones, uh, like, let me grab one. I don't know, like this one, I feel like looks much nicer. It's more centered, doesn't have anything on his face. It's got some creases, but, um, you know, it's a lowly SGC 30, where this is a 35. <laughs> so, it gets a big premium. It's kind of crazy that this one is valued at what it is, but it's comping at $8,000. And once again, uh, you know, significantly higher than it was a year ago, as is the case, it seems, for anything over an SGC, like 1 or 1.5. Um, and I'll just show you the next. This is card number 3. Um, this is basically the exact same grade, but this one was graded by SGC when they started only doing the 10-point scale instead of the 100 and the 10-point on the same card. But these two are basically the exact same card in terms of, you know, uh, which variation they are, which back and which variation, and what grade.
grade they are, even though they look quite a bit different. This one looks nicer to me because it doesn't have the splotch over his face. Um, and um, is, is better centered. So like, as between these cards, I would definitely much rather have this one. And I'm sure if I put these up for auction on the same day, this one would sell for quite a bit more than this one. But right now, the, the comps on you know this card are, are eight thousand bucks a piece, even though they're um, the same exact card, really. But you know they present very differently based on condition issues. Okay, um, coming in at number two is the card that was number one last year, and it is this beautiful piece that I will probably never sell, um, unless I don't know somehow become destitute <laughs> but um, this is uh, just a beautiful card absolutely I'm, I'm really glad I snapped this up when I did I paid I think 2500 uh, 2900 I paid for this um, it's a 1921 American Carmel babe Ruth card um, showing this is one of the I, I think this goes into that sort of category of like iconic cards um, at least for from my perspective, um, because it's one of you know just a handful. Maybe there's like three cards out there that have Babe Ruth in a Red Sox jersey, and this is one of them. Even though it's you know a card that um, has him with uh, the uh, Yankees, you know on the on the label, it shows him in a Red Sox uniform. So you know it's an early card. Um, you know, when it's got that, so, um, there's a even more iconic card that's, uh, I think it's a, it's, it's called an M101. It's a sporting news magazine card, and it's smaller, it's like tobacco sized, um, and that has, uh, that I think is his earliest card in a Red Sox uniform, and it's one that I have always wanted, and I you know, I if I would have just caved, spent the money and bought that for, you know, probably fifty thousand dollars, you know, ten years ago when I first saw it, you know, it's probably like a eight hundred thousand dollar card right now, so yeah, I don't know when it comes to like classic, you know, iconic players and their, you know, best oldest cards. I mean it feels like you just can't make a mistake buying them, but <laughs> I don't know, things have gone up so much now you feel like, oh, well, eh, it could go down because it's come up so much. So now I'm afraid to buy anything like that, but back then I, you know, I wish I would have just bought the bullet and bought, or uh, bit the bullet and bought some of those super nice. I also, you know, I wanted a 52 Mantle back then, and those were, you could get a decent, like, PSA 1 for probably 5 grand, 7 grand. Back then, now, you know, 25 grand. It's like the cheapest you'll ever see a man, uh, mantle 52 tops. So, I don't know. What does that tell you? <laughs> Maybe nothing, but this is a beautiful card. Um, um, back then, uh, the value was 6487, and actually, this same 6487 comp that I, that I used back then is the only um, comp for this. Authentic altered grade of this card. So if you look this card up um, uh, using vintage card prices, which is what I use for a lot of these older cards, you know that'll still be the most recent comp. But that was like from two years ago. So I I sort of you know extrapolated based on other sales of this card that it's pro it's worth about ten thousand now. And you know who knows what it would go for if I put it up for auction. Maybe it goes for seven grand. Maybe it goes for you know fifteen grand. But I think 10,000 is a fair estimate of this card um, at this point. And I, I, you know, I'm super bullish on these kinds of what I consider to be very iconic cards. Speaking of which, it's time for number one, a new number one that um, last year was in the top 20, but it was like way down. It was probably like 16 or 17 or... 15, I don't know, something like that, um, and it has had a real spike in the last just two, three, four months, um, let's talk about it, here we go, this is a, uh, 1911 M116, 
Sporting Life Hans uh, Wagner, also known as Honus Wagner. And, um, you know, I've kind of been creating a, a, a thesis here, which is that in the past year, maybe the past two years, you know, the cards that have sort of an iconic nature to them are the ones that have really gone up significantly. The 52 Tops, Mantle and Maze, the, um, you know, the T206 Cobb cards, um, you know, some uh, of the, like, 1933 Gaudi Babe Ruth cards that I don't have in my collection, um, you know, some of the Lou Gehry cards from that same set, um, all of those cards are, are just iconic cards. I mean, they put those cards on the covers of sports card magazines all the time. You see them, you know, like, I don't know if you ever see, like, a news report or whatever on cards, and they have to do a graphic for it. They're going to use, like, one of those cards. And um, another card that is... Uh, you know, perhaps the most iconic card, certainly it's the most valuable card in the entire uh, baseball card game. And uh, that card is the T206 Honus Wagner, which um, I'm going to actually see if I can pull up uh, an image of it for you. Um, if, you know, if you collect baseball cards at all, you, you know what this card looks like. Um, um, there we go. Let's see if that works. I don't know if I can drag directly from my... Oops. I don't want that one. Oh, okay, there it is, but that one's a bad example because um, it's like all torn up. There. Okay. So this card. This is the T206 Wagner. You know, it's the same design as all those T206 Cobbs. Um, it's extremely rare. There are probably like 25 or so of these in the, you know, world. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's always been known as the rarest, most valuable baseball card. And lately, you know, that's been taken to crazy extremes. I mean, the lowest of the low of these things sells for, you know, $2 million, $3 million now. If you have a higher grade one, you know, it's just... It's just crazy what they can go for, 10 million bucks probably. But they don't come up for, for sale, so we're stuck with like the PSA 1s and 2s. Um, so anyways, that image is in fact the same image that is used on this card. The M116 is just um, reversed. And uh, they put um, Pittsburgh on his uh, jersey. I'm going to bring that back for you guys so we can compare it. You see, um, this is just the reverse of this. Um, and then the Pittsburgh they put, but other than that, it's the same photo. So, um, when I bought this card, I thought to myself, well, why, why wouldn't somebody want a card that has the same image of the same player? as the most valuable card in the whole friggin' world. That's got to be something that is going to, you know, attract a lot of attention and uh, desire from collectors in the future. So that's why I bought this one. And uh, it's taken a while um, for <laughs> the hobby to sort of agree with me on this point. But uh, it finally has, it seems, um, one year ago. Uh, well, okay, I paid $2,000 for this card. A year ago, the most recent comp was $1,680, but that was an older comp. It was from, like, maybe a couple years before then, and it was well before, you know, the major spikes in value of both vintage and modern cards in the past few years. So I knew that comp was, you know, likely garbage, but what can you do? If you don't have a recent comp, I don't know, wait, I guess. So I just put it in the list at the 1680, even though back then it was probably worth at least three, four grand. However, um, you know, in the past three, four, five months, Honus Wagner cards, especially ones like this that have, and there are a couple others that have the image from his T206 card, they have gone bonkers. There's also a variation of this same card. This is a, um, as you can see, a pastel background. This M116 set has 
has a blue background variation as well, and those are more valuable and more sought after. If this was the same card in this condition with the blue background, it would be worth probably, I would say, four to five times as much as, as this card is currently worth. But that said, this card is comping at $12,100. And I suspect if I put this up for auction, it may go for even more than that, but I'm not going to... I. I you know, I gotta keep this card. It's my only honest Wagner card. So, um, anyways, kind of funny how <coughs> you know things change. Um, and it's you know it's instructive to to look at all these cards from year to year to kind of see what's happened. And you know, certainly the themes are one modern. You know, ultra modern cards uh, have tanked in value. Everything is down. Even the best players. Other than with the, you know Otani being the one exception, <laughs> everybody else Acuna, Soto, all the players that are doing well are you know if they if they had cards around in 2020 and 2021, those cards are worth drastically less now, often half or less. So that's theme number one. Theme number two is um, you know low grade vintage. Uh, has kind of, you know, treaded water, but is often down in the players that spiked a lot, you know, about a year ago. So the low-grade cobs, you know, those are down. Uh, low-grade uh, mantles are down, and some of the even mid-grade mantle stuff is down from the big spike that happened about a year ago. So that's probably just sort of people, you know, kind of collecting profits and selling off things and, um, you know, the market kind of going down with that, but uh, mid-grade or anything kind of higher than PSA 1 vintage, um, especially the older stuff, you know, the rarer background, kind of T206 tobacco cards, and, you know, Honus Wagner cards um, seem to have gone up significantly in the last year, um, so we've seen that, you know, many times in the uh, results here, but those are the three themes I've taken uh, from a review of uh, pricing of my top 20 most valuable cards in my collection. Um, another thing I'll sort of say is I, I, I really don't buy, <laughs> I don't buy many single cards, so, um, you know, if I did this list it, again in, in another year, you know, you might see some some of the cards changing place. Maybe you know someone goes on a super hot streak. Uh, maybe the the ultra modern market kind of you know recovers a bit, and some of those cards move up. Maybe you know John ja Morant comes back and you know really actually does change his life and goes to win the championship, and all this stuff is doubled. So you may see some changes on cards in this collection. You know, if any of those things happen, but. I'm really not out there buying, you know, thousand dollar plus uh, single cards these days. It's just not what I like to do. I like to buy unopened, um, and I do spend, you know, thousands of dollars on individual items, but they are, um, you know, sealed boxes of older cards from like the 70s, um, or they're sealed packs that are, you know, um, PSA graded. That's really where I'm spending my money um, and uh, I would not I would not think it's a bad idea to buy um, you know really any vintage card of somebody who you like and uh, who has a following um, but I just am not particularly driven to do it uh, you know some years ago when I was buying up these and those cops and mantles and stuff I was more inclined to do that but uh, I don't know these days things have gone up a lot so it makes me scared and actually one thing I've thought about doing is trying to snap up a lot of like basketball and football like superstar rookies like you know a Kareem rookie I recently bought a a Walter Payton rookie in like a PSA 6 or something you know so it's like four or five hundred dollar card nothing crazy but um, I don't know I, I think I feel like those seem like bargains to me right now it's difficult for me to see a world in which those cards go significantly down. Maybe they go down a little bit, but I can definitely see like in maybe five or 10 years, you know, if there's a, 
another big swell of interest in the sports card market. You know, I think people are going to be looking at, like, those Julius Irving rookies. They're going to be looking at the Magic Bird rookies. Um, you know, they'll always be interested in Jordan rookies, of course. And that might be a good thing to buy now. Those are certainly down heavily since uh, 2021. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. If, if I were, you know, thinking of things that I think are kind of underpriced right now, I, I would probably look to uh, basketball and, and football and, and hockey cards, too, you, where you can get, you know, rookies of, like, the major, major players for a fraction of what you could get them for in baseball. So, I don't know. I, 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 I think that's where I'd look if I were buying single cards, and I have looked a little bit at those. But primarily, I focus on what I love most and what I know best, and that's, you know, unopened stuff. So I really, um, I think for, for me, the, the best place to spend my, you know, dollars is in buying that kind of stuff. And I, I love having it in my collection. So even if it goes to zero, I still would love to look at all of the cool unopened stuff, especially the older stuff. Um, you know, from time to time, it would, it would give me a lot of joy. So uh, I think that's really the best thing you can spend your money on in, in collecting is uh, things that bring you joy to look at and to, to hold in your hands and to, and to look through from time to time. So that's what we got for today, folks. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. We will see you all next time. You have a great one.